Thank you very much, everybody. I'd like to uh, begin by saying that we just completed a meeting with the Secretary of Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, and Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chao, on proposals regarding the airlines and the airline business. And we're very, working very closely with a lot of different people. We'll be probably putting out a proposal and giving them uh, some of the details, some of the very powerful details over the weekend. Uh, it's moving along quickly. The airline business has been hit very hard, as everybody knows. And we are going to be in a position to do a lot to help them so that they keep their employees and they save their businesses. And that'll be taking place, I think you can say, over the weekend. We may even have discussions with some of the airlines or all of the airlines over the weekend. And I think it's going to be a very acceptable package. It's a very big package and a very acceptable package. It'll be good for our country, good for the airlines, uh, good for a lot of people. Likewise, I just spoke with the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, and the King of Saudi Arabia, King Solomon. And we had a big talk as to uh, oil production and OPEC and uh, making it so that our industry does well and the oil industry does better than it's doing right now. It's uh, — the numbers are so low that there'll be layoffs all over the world. There'll be certainly layoffs in this country. We don't want that to happen. We built a great, great uh, energy business in the United States. So we have uh, tens of thousands of jobs. We had a very good talk. We'll see what happens. But as you know, OPEC met today. And uh, I would say they're getting close to a deal. We'll soon find out. So that was a conversation we just had. So we had a busy hour and a half. And let me begin by expressing my sincere gratitude to the American people. Millions of Americans are making profound and difficult sacrifices in their own lives because they know it will save the lives of countless others. And that's exactly what it's doing. You see what's happening and where we are, where we stand. And hopefully, we're going to be opening up. We can call it opening very, very very, very soon, I hope. Together, our people are writing one of the most noble chapters in the proud history of our nation. Americans are also encouraged to learn that Boris Johnson, Prime Minister, has been moved out of intensive care. That's a tremendous statement. And we continue to pray for him and his fast recovery. That's a very, very positive development. As the New York metropolitan area continues its battle against the outbreak, the full power of the federal government is there to support them. As you know, the Javits Center has now been fully converted into a 3,000-bed hospital, one of the largest anywhere in the country. And by the incredible professionals, I have to say, the, the Corps of Engineers, what they can do is just incredible. They've done a Fantastic job, and they're building nationwide 21 temporary hospitals and care facilities, adding 17,000 hospital beds. And they did that all within a very short period of time. It's incredible what they've done. Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA has been fantastic. Our sweeping airlift operation to keep doctors and nurses supplied with protective equipment. Project Airbridge continues to expand with more than 24 flights already completed and 49 additional flights now scheduled in the near future. So that's been very successful. And that gear and those outfits are being handed out. Uh, as they arrive, they're going directly to point. The American medical system continues to perform beyond our highest expectations, reminding us that the United States is blessed with the most advanced health care and the most skilled health care workers anywhere on the planet. Other countries are looking to what we're doing, and our testing operation has now become far and away the most sophisticated and the best anywhere. And we want to thank all of the heroes on the front lines as they fight to save American lives. We're at the top of the hill, pretty sure we're at the top of the hill, and now we're going uh, downward. In some cases, we've already started that process. Earlier today, I spoke with hundreds of mental health leaders and advocates from around the country to discuss the vital work and the vital work they're doing. We had the top doctors in the country, some international doctors. Mental health, big factor. 
not only has the virus inflicted immense physical suffering on many people, but also mental and emotional suffering as well. Even though we're staying physically apart, no American is alone, and we're all in this together. But the mental health doctors and experts, uh, it's a very great call. It was a very interesting call. They're working very hard. We're also seeing encouraging signs in our race to develop breakthrough treatments and therapies. Pfizer revealed today that it has found a promising new treatment that might prevent the virus from replicating, and that hopes uh, it hopes to begin testing in clinical trials very soon. It's going to be uh, very, very soon. They have great, great uh, feelings for this particular therapy, and uh, they think that uh, a lot of good things are happening uh, through the FDA's coronavirus treatment acceleration program. 19 therapies and treatments are now being tested, and 26 more are in the active planning or clinical trial. So we have 19 therapies being tested currently, and 26 more are in the active planning for clinical trials. That's a big statement. That's a lot. Trials for Gilead's anti-rival drug, Remdesivir, continue, and the company has also expanded emergency use for new patients, getting good early results, by the way. The companies that manufacture hydroxychloroquine are massively ramping up production. Uh, as you know, many people are recommending strongly z -Pak be added, the z -Pak, and also zinc. And the federal government continues to build our stockpiles and distribute millions of doses for doctors to use as they see fit. And uh, I'm pleased to inform you we're just having a lot of good things are happening, but we'll have to see how that all works out. But we have we've purchased and we have stockpiled millions and millions of doses, and uh, we're distributing it. Some states want it very badly. Michigan, we just sent a lot to Michigan and uh, other areas. I'm reporting today that we passed uh, 2 million tests completed in the United States, first time, most anywhere in the country. It's a milestone for our country. It's a milestone anywhere. Nobody's done anywhere close. Our tests are highly sophisticated and highly accurate. At the same time, we're making important progress on the economic front of this war. In a few moments, Secretary of Labor Eugene Scalia will explain new steps that we're taking to ensure American workers swiftly receive unemployment and paid leave benefits, and that employers protect the health and safety of all workers, including essential workers on the job, working very, very closely with workers and with employers. To provide further economic relief, the Federal Reserve announced this morning that it will provide up to $2.3 trillion in support to businesses, states, and local governments. $600 billion in loans will be available for mid-sized businesses with up to 10,000 employees. And $500 billion will be available for states, counties, with over 2 million residents, and cities with a population of over 1 million. My administration is also working with Congress to replenish the very successful incredibly successful the way it's going, Paycheck Protection Program, which is allowing hundreds of thousands of small businesses to keep their workers on the payroll, meaning it'll keep those businesses open. We need both Democrats and Republicans to come together to get this legis the legislation completed. And it looks like it's uh, on its way, but we need both. And it should be for people that are working, for the workers and if you look and you see, we uh, have a lot of people that are affected by that. And it's a very positive development. So we have to get a bipartisan approval of that. And hopefully, that'll happen today. The Department of Education is also announcing the availability of more than $6 billion in emergency grant funding to assist college students impacted by the cancellation of classes and the suspension of housing. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of things suspended. Housing is one of them. Previously, we waived student loan payments for six months. So student loan payments have been waived for six months. So we'll discuss it after that. May go further. Although this medical war has separated our citizens for a period of time, it's also united our entire nation. I think I can say, like almost never before, Americans are moving forward with 
common purpose and shared resolve, determined to vanquish the virus and lift our nation to even greater heights. We are supremely confident in the magnificent future that awaits the American people. And with that, before I invite our Vice President, our great Vice President, and Gene Scalia to speak, we'll take a few questions, and then I'm going back into negotiations on oil and on airlines. Yeah, please. Conversation with President Putin and the King. Yeah, did you, I had a very did good you, conversation. Did you, did you organize that call, and did, do they understand the problems they're causing with yeah. the oil output? Yeah, situation? no, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of there's so much production, nobody even knows what to do with it. That's how it's working. And Saudi Arabia, and as you know, Russia. It's well known that we're uh, producing a lot, and they were perhaps fighting with each other over the production and the amount of oil being produced. And frankly, there's not enough room to even store it. Our storage is now full, going to be very soon. Our strategic uh, national storage is uh, — I said, this is a great time to fill it up, load it up with oil that, frankly, is uh, at pricing that nobody's ever seen before. I don't think we've seen this probably since the 1950s. That was with big dollars. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the conversation was very good. They're getting close to a deal. That's OPEC and many other countries outside of OPEC, and we'll see what happens. No, I think they were getting along very well. We had a very good — we had a very good call. I think it was a very good call. We're going to see what happens, but it was a very good call. Uh, they'll probably announce something either today or tomorrow, one way or the other. Could be good, could be not so good, but I think one way or the other — go ahead, Jim. Mr. President, how could the administration discuss the possibility of reopening the country when the administration does not have an adequate nationwide testing system for this virus? Don't you need a nationwide testing no. system for the virus before you reopen no, the We country? have a great testing system. We have the best — right now, the best testing system in the world. But there are certain People sections — right now. There are certain sections in the country that are in phenomenal shape already. Other sections are coming online. Other sections are going down. And we, in addition to that, are giving out millions of tests. And every day, we're doing it uh, exponentially. We're picking up. And what we'll be doing in the very near future is going to certain areas of our country and do massive testing. Uh, it's not necessary, but it would be a good thing to have. Don't you need that, though, Mr. Right. President, to make sure people are safe going back to work? You don't want to send people back to the workplace. We want to have it, and we're going to see if we have it. Do you need it? No. Is it a nice thing to do? Yes. Uh, we're talking about 325 million people, uh, and that's not going to happen, as you can imagine. And no, it would never happen with anyone else, either. Other countries do it, but they do it in a limited form. We'll probably be the leader of the pack. Please. Mr. President, uh, what do you say to the 16 million Americans, more than 16 million Americans, who have lost their jobs in the last three weeks and fear that the economy won't just bounce back, like you said? Well, I think the economy is going to do very well. Now, that's just my feeling. It's a strong feeling. I've had good, proper feelings about a lot of things over the years, and I think we're going to do well. Uh, we're doing very — it looks like we're — uh, at the lower end of the curb in terms of death, which is a terrible word, a terrible dark word that we've experienced like nobody's ever seen before in this country. I mean, we're, we have numbers that are terrible. But when you look at the lower levels of 100 — lower prediction levels of 100, 120,000 to 220,000, or if we did nothing, up to 2.2 million people, uh, we're looking at a much lower level than uh, the level of, I hope, than the level of 100,000. So we're going to see. Um, we're going to have to — you can never — you can never do anything about the people that lost their loved ones and loved their — lost their friends and, I mean, the great friendships. And I'm not sure a lot of people will ever be the same. But I think our country, from an economic standpoint, will end up being stronger than ever. We have tremendous stimulus. We have tremendous stimulus plans. We have things in the works that are going to really, I think, fire the country. I think that what's going to happen is we're going to have a big bounce rather than a small bounce. But we will be back. And I think, honestly, I think our country is going to be back from an economic standpoint. Again, you can never replace the people that were lost, and to their families, certainly, you can never do a thing like that. But uh, we will have succeeded in many ways, uh, hopefully keeping the number way below our minimum numbers. And also, from an economic standpoint, you know, we met with the 
uh, mental health people today. And that takes a — this has taken a tremendous toll mentally on a lot of people. Uh, and I think we're going to open up strong. I think we're going to open up very successfully. And I'd like to say even more successfully than before. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, oil is trading today at about $23 a barrel yeah. in New York. Where would you want to see the price? Do you want it at $30, $40, $50 a barrel? Well, I, I want to see it where there's a certain market, but I also don't want — I don't want to see it where people are — have no idea. You know, we're opening up — we'll be opening up uh, areas for storage of oil, massive areas for storage of oil, because oil today is not selling. And what happened is the virus knocked out 40 percent of the market. Immediately — you know that. You know the number. 40 percent. Now, there was a lot of oil, but it was very controllable. All of a sudden, they lost 40 percent. You look at the road, you look at the car, you look at what's going on. There's nobody driving. There's no reason for it right now. That'll start coming back. But we are storing uh, millions of, ba of barrels of oil that nobody thought would even be possible. Frankly, ships turned out to be a good business for some people, because they're filling up tankers, sending them out to sea, and not saying where to go. They're just sitting out there loaded up with oil. So we want to save our energy in this country. We want to make sure that our energy uh, companies, businesses, and employees, workers, uh, remain strong. So that's how I'm involved. And I think that's going to happen. So right now, if you look, you're probably talking 23, 25. If they announce a deal, we can get it up. We need a minimum number so the companies don't go out of business, so they're not going to lay off all of these energy workers who are important to our country. And, you know, we're now energy independent. We could do something where we only used our oil. But I think the long-term benefit is to be able to just go with the market. And uh, it's going to work out. It's all going to work out. If you looked at three weeks ago, as you know, as we talked about it, three weeks ago and two weeks ago, this was catastrophic. I think it's really hitting bottom. And I think that — I mean, we've had a bottom. But now, at $23 and $25 and probably heading up, at the same time, we save our energy and we also produce great, cheap energy and we save our jobs. Yeah. I want to ask you about the Paycheck Protection Program, because every day we're hearing from small business owners who are telling us that their banks don't know how to access this money. They're trying to apply. They can't figure it out. So where does the fault lie? Does it lie with the banks? I don't think there's a fault. Um, we're, they're doing record numbers of, of dollars. They're dealing with many community banks. They're dealing with Bank of America, Citibank. A lot of — Wells Fargo, as you know, is very much involved. Uh, and they're dealing with the bankers. Can't go that quickly, but I'm hearing it's a very, very successful rollout. They did want changes in applications. They want changes in, in, in loan requirements, et cetera. But they are taking billions and billions of dollars' worth of loans. And in the very near future, the banks will be relieving the money. They'll be paying out the money. Yeah, please. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, are you still expecting the USMCA to take effect on July 1st? And considering uh, the fact that the auto industry is hurting these days. Are you ready to postpone the um, — Well, we have a deal. The yeah, the deal is with Canada. The deal is with Mexico. We have a deal. And obviously, the deal is different from the standpoint that production will be lower. But we have a deal. It's a signed deal. It's a deal that's a uh, — one of the worst deals that we've ever had was NAFTA, one of the worst trade deals ever made by any country anywhere. We'll be terminating that. And the New Deal is a great deal for our country. So that's something. Now, again, we get hit by the virus, and uh, we'll see where that all goes. But certainly, car production is going to be down for a little while. But ultimately, good for our farmers, great for our farmers. We'll be helping our farmers, by the way. We have uh, money going out to our farmers in the pretty near future having to do with uh, — you see what's happened. The farmers got hurt very badly by all of this. People are — eating less from the standpoint that there's no restaurants are open, no businesses are open, no hotels are open. They'll start to come back. But we're going to be helping out our farmers. Yeah, please. Uh, the new uh, go go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, Philip Weigman, Real Clear Politics. Uh, earlier, you mentioned Project Skybridge, and yeah. we're hearing that through that project, a lot of the PPE that was sent out to other countries is coming back to this country. Do you, do you know when we will be able to bring a majority of that back? And then, are you frustrated that USAID allowed a lot of that aid to go out the door in the first place? Should no, they have brought it no, back? No, I'm not, because we're, we're in very good shape. You'll be speaking with uh, Mike Pence about this in a little while. 
you look at the hospitals. You look at what's going on. I spoke to — yesterday, I spoke with the uh, governor of Louisiana. I'm saying, do you think we need that extra thousand beds that we're in the process of building? Uh, we are really in good shape. You're not hearing people are needing ventilators much. In fact, we're going to start helping other countries with ventilators. We're going to end up having a lot of ventilators for future, should something happen for hospitals, ideally, to keep and have. But, no, I think we're in very, very good shape. Uh, we have calls with governors all the time, and the governor's in very good shape now. We have helped — we have sent — Billions and billions and billions of dollars between ventilators, equipment, uh, protective equipment, masks. We have 500 million masks coming. 500 million from one group. 500 — it'll be 300 million and 200 million over a short period of time. Now, I think we're in very good shape. Please. President, um, speaking of testing, some experts, including Scott Gottlieb, have talked about 750,000 tests per week being needed before the economy is opened. Can you address that? Do you agree with those numbers? If not, how many tests per week do yeah. you think we should have before the economy yeah, is opened? I don't like sir. using the word needed because I don't think it's needed, but I think we're going to try and hit a number like that. That's a very high number, but we're going to be trying to hit it. Uh, and we probably might be able to do that. Uh, please, go ahead. You can that, sir. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, today, the Democrats pushed for more rescue money for states and hospitals, uh, which are complaining that they needed to fight the coronavirus pandemic. Do you think hospitals and states need this money? Would you support I do, and I do support something, but I support it for the next phase. It's much simpler in the next phase, whether that phase is infrastructure or whatever. So I'm going to leave you now with Mike Pence and with uh, Eugene Scalia, and if you would, uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. We have a lot of — I think a lot of very big news to report. We've had a tremendous day between, I believe, what's happening with the energy industry and I believe what's happening with airlines. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. At the present moment, we have now cleared uh, more than 2 million tests across the country. And, um, and I'm pleased to report we're testing more than 100,000 people a day now. Um, but we're, uh, we're working around the clock to scale up the new types of tests that the FDA has approved in record time. Uh, and every American can be confident that we'll continue to build out that structure going forward for the weeks ahead and the months ahead. At the present moment, there's more than 450,000 Americans who have tested positive for the coronavirus, and sadly, more than 16,000 Americans have lost their lives. And as President Trump just said, um, our hearts go out to the families that have lost loved ones. And I want to assure you that all of us working at every level understand these are not numbers, these are lives. And our, our heartfelt condolences during this heartbreaking week go out to every American family that's lost a loved one to the coronavirus. It has been a difficult week. But as Dr. Burks uh, will reflect in just a few moments, as we look at the data literally on a county-by-county -county basis every day, uh, we continue to see evidence uh, that, uh, that in areas where the epidemic has impacted most, the greater New York City area, uh, Louisiana, uh, the Detroit Metro, the Denver Metro, we continue to see evidence of stabilization. And, uh, uh, and it appears, as Dr. Berg suggests, that we are, we are close to the peak in each of those areas so impacted. We also express uh, gratitude and, and appreciation for the people of California and Washington State uh, who continue to be low and steady in the number of cases that are emerging there. We're watching the Chicago metro area. We're watching the Boston metro area. Uh, and uh, as Dr. Burks uh, will discuss, we, we just continue to urge every American to put into practice the President's uh, coronavirus guidelines, because all evidence indicates from the West Coast to what we're beginning to see in major outbreak areas on the East Coast. It's working, America, and it's working because you're doing it. 
and we encourage you onward in that. Uh, today, the White House Coronavirus uh, Task Force met, but uh, most of the team also met uh, with Republicans and Democrats in two separate conference calls uh, of the United States Senate. Um, Secretary Mnuchin, our health experts, uh, uh, Admiral Polovchek, uh, Dr. Hahn joined us as we discussed a broad range of issues. The Treasury Secretary touched on uh, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, now in uh, day five, reporting $125 billion has been approved so far, um, 30,000 new individual users and 3,900 lenders are participating. Uh, we also discussed uh, that the Treasury Department will issue uh, a new frequently asked question document tonight, an FAQ as they're known, to clarify how seasonal businesses can participate in the Paycheck Protection Program as well. With regard to direct payments to Americans, uh, uh, the Treasury Secretary assured uh, senators and we assure every American that we remain on the timetable where the first payments in direct deposits will go out by the end of next week. For the average family of four, that'll be $3,000. $400 in direct uh, financial support and will no doubt uh, be welcome news. Uh, anyone who uh, is interested in additional information on any of these programs can go to treasury.gov or sba.gov. Um, since we last spoke, I, I spoke with uh, Governor Laura Kelly of Kansas, Governor uh, Andy Bashir of Kentucky, also spoke to governors of Texas uh, and Rhode Island. I assured each one of them as we continue to work through the process of making sure uh, that we distribute the resources at the point of the need is that at President Trump's direction, uh, our objective working through FEMA is to make sure that states have what they need when they need it. Uh, and to see the progress that we've made, the President just reflected on in New York and New Jersey, Louisiana, and the partnership we forged with governors in those states, California and Washington State before. Uh, uh, we trust gives confidence uh, to governors and leaders of states across the country, most importantly our dedicated health care workers, that we will be there to meet that need uh, should that uh, need arise. Present moment, uh, FEMA reports the President has approved 54 major disaster uh, declarations and states around the country have stood up 29,000 National Guard, 11,000 of which are fully funded uh, by the federal government under title 32. Also speaking of our military, uh, at the present moment we received a report today from the Department of Defense that 4,100 active duty military medical personnel have been deployed in New York, New Jersey, uh, and Connecticut. And uh, uh, they are personnel that are working on the ground uh, at the Javits Center, uh, working of course at the USNS Comfort Ship. But uh, because at, at the present moment, uh, the utilization of, uh, of both of those temporary facilities has been fairly modest. Uh, the DOD actually worked with the city of New York to establish what amounts to a, uh, a uniform temp service. Uh, they call it the bullpen. And uh, today they literally deployed from the ship and from the Javits Center 75 medical personnel to relieve uh, dedicated uh, health care workers within uh, the hospital system in the city of New York, and we'll continue to do that. We're going to make sure those uh, federal temporary hospital and Javits Center is fully staffed. We'll make sure the USNS Comfort is staffed, uh, but, uh, but the physicians, uh, those military personnel, uh, are going to be also be deployed across the city to bring much needed relief uh, to our health care uh, workers and our system. From the VA standpoint, we've opened up. Uh, VA facilities in New York City, East Orange, New Jersey, Detroit, Michigan, and we are opening up uh, the, v the VA facility uh, to coronavirus patients in Shreveport, uh, Louisiana. Uh, finally, I mentioned that uh, today we exceeded more than 2 million tests that have been performed across the country. And also, uh, literally, working with the U.S. Public Health Service, states around the country have stood up hundreds of drive through testing sites. Uh, and just this week, FEMA and the U.S. Public Health Service announced that we will give an option to states to transition from a federal testing site, dozens of which have been assembled around the country, to a state-managed site. I want to emphasize that this is an option. Uh, we believe it gives states greater flexibility to style sites or manage sites 
in areas that they think are most important. Uh, but, uh, but we're also processing requests for continued federal participation in states from uh, New Jersey to Louisiana to Illinois, Colorado, and Texas. And we want to assure people in communities all across the country that we'll continue to partner with states to the extent that they prefer us uh, to be a part of it. With regard to the air bridge, uh, three flights were scheduled to arrive today uh, in Chicago, New York, uh, and Dallas-Fort Worth. Forty-nine flights are scheduled over the next uh, three days. And we continue to work supplies. We continue to literally leave no stone unturned around America and around the world. We're literally in the process of acquiring tens of millions of supplies uh, that are being brought into a distribution system organized uh, out of FEMA and focused on the areas most in need. We're also bringing real innovation. And at the, at the White House Coronavirus Task Force today, we, uh, we tasked the FDA uh, and CMS to review the feasibility of allowing hospital workers to use cloth gowns uh, for performing procedures. Um, uh, it was observed that uh, 20 years ago, most uh, physicians and most surgeons wore cloth gowns every day and laundered them, but it's transitioned to disposable gowns and um, uh, we're working uh, very rapidly in the next 24 hours and we'll have guidance uh, for hospitals and healthcare workers about the ability to, uh, to in effect, recycle gowns uh, and make sure that we have the supplies that we need. As the President mentioned today, uh, the President and the First Lady uh, and I and my wife Karen uh, were honored to be a part uh, of, a, of a conference call with mental health professionals from all around the country. And we know while there are families that are struggling with the coronavirus and struggling with heartbreaking loss to the coronavirus, we understand this is a very challenging time for every American, but uh, most especially Americans who struggle with mental disorders or struggle with addiction. Uh, and the President uh, brought some incredibly dedicated people together to make sure that they know we're with them. Early on, the President uh, expanded access to telemedicine. And we've also issued guidance for using technology to remain connected to social support groups. Uh, and we just urge uh, everyone, uh, everyone who may be feeling a, an emotional burden or a vulnerability during this time, uh, to, uh, uh, to reach out to the many resources that are there and to know that you're not alone, that we're with you and we'll get through this and we'll get through this together. So despite heartbreaking losses that continue this week, uh, in communities uh, from New York to New Jersey uh, to Louisiana. There are signs of progress and hope abounds. Uh, the reality is that we see new projections from the experts. And if the projections are right, uh, it's because it's working, America. It's because the American people are putting into practice the social distancing, caring for their neighbors and their loved ones and their family members, and putting their health first. And we just want to urge every American to continue to put those principles and guidelines into practice every day.